youth the covid the Welcome, welcome, welcome online, online, Hello nurses, midwives, and top notchers. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Kung bago ka lamang po sa akin channel, don't forget to click the subscribe button below and i-click mo na rin po ang ating bell button for more video updates. Our topic for today are the effects and functions of your estrogen and progesterone hormone. So let's begin our topic with your estrogen hormone. So pag sinabi po nating estrogen hormone, Estrogen is known as the hormone for women, okay? So, hormone for women, that is your estrogen hormone. So, we have your three types of your estrogen hormone known as the estrone, estradiol, and the estriol hormone. So, let's begin with your estrone hormone. So, pag sinabi po nating estrone, estrone is the hormone estrogen produced by your adipose, okay? So, it is the hormone estrogen predominant during menopause. Okay? Again, so pag sinabi po natin estrone, yan po yung estrogen na makikita natin sa mga babae nagmenopause na. So estrone is the hormone which is predominant during your menopause. Okay? So pag sinabi naman po natin estradiol, estradiol is the hormone estrogen produced by your ovaries. Okay? So estradiol is the predominant hormone estrogen during your reproductive years. Okay? So, pag sinabi po nating reproductive years, reproductive years, yan po yung 15 to 49 years old. So, pag ikaw ay nasa 15 years old na hanggang 49 years old, ang nasa katawan mong estrogen ay estradiol. Okay? So, take note that estradiol is the predominant hormone during your reproductive years. And take note that your estradiol is considered as the strongest form of estrogen. Again, so estradiol is the strongest form of Estrogen And last, you have your estriol hormone. So, pag sinabi naman po natin estriol, estriol is the hormone estrogen produced by your placenta. Okay? So, itong si placenta, lumalabas po ito sa board exam, placenta takes over the function of your corpus luteum at 12 weeks. Tandaan niyo po yan. So, fully matured ng placenta at 12 weeks and nagproproduce na rin po siya ng ating estrogen and progesterone hormone on that Week. Okay, so 12 weeks, nagproproduce na po yung placenta ng hormone estrogen and hormone progesterone. So, pag ka sa board exam kung ano yung circulating estrogen ng mga buntis na nanay, the predominant hormone estrogen during your pregnancy period is your estriol. Okay? So, remember that your estriol is also considered as the most abundant type of your estrogen hormone but it is the weakest form of estrogen. Again, so it is the most abundant estrogen but the weakest form of estrogen hormone. Okay, so let's begin now with your estrogen functions and effects in your reproductive years and during your pregnancy period. Okay, so pag sinabi po natin estrogen, estrogen inhibits the follicle stimulating hormone or the FSH. Your FSH is the hormone which is produced by your anterior pituitary gland. Okay, so meron po tayo ditong mnemonics para hindi po natin makakalimutan yung ating functions and effects ng ating estrogen hormone. So we have your estrogen mnemonics. Okay, so letter E, E is for your endometrial growth. Okay, so your estrogen hormone is responsible for the growth of your endometrial lining, especially during the proliferative phase of your menstrual cycle. So, pag tanungin man kayo sa board exam kung ano yung hormone na responsible sa thickening and proliferation ng lining of the endometrium or the uterus during your proliferative phase of your menstrual cycle, your answer here is your estrogen hormone. Hormone. Kasi si estrogen po ang nagpapakapal ng lining ng uterus right after your menstruation, which is the proliferative phase. So, your estrogen hormone increases your lining of the uterus up to 8 to 10 folds. So, lumabas na po yan sa board exam. So, up to 8 to 10 folds, your uterine lining is increased due to your increased level of your estrogen hormone, especially during your 
proliferative phase. Then next we have also letter S. Letter S is the secondary sexual characteristics. So estrogen hormone is responsible for the development of your secondary sexual characteristics. So lumabas na po yan sa board exam. So ano daw po yung hormone na responsible for the development of your secondary sexual characteristics? That is your estrogen Hormone. So, lumabas na rin po sa board exam. Ang tanong po dyan is ano daw yung function ng estrogen. The primary function of your estrogen is the development of your secondary sexual characteristics. So, tatandaan nyo po yan, the main function or the primary function of your estrogen in women is the development of your secondary sexual characteristics like the development of your breast, your hips, and menstruation. So, yun po yung ginagawa ng estrogen, kaya siya tinawag na hormone for women. And letter T, letter T is the thinning of the cervical mucus. Okay, so take note that your estrogen is the hormone which is responsible for the thinning of the cervical mucus. So pag sinabi po natin thinning of the cervical mucus, that is the spin barque method. Okay, so spin barque, alam po natin yan, that is your clear, slippery, or stretchy, which is thin lang po siya. Okay, so hindi po siya thick, that is a thin cervical mucus. Mucos. And kapag tanongin po kayo sa board exam kung anong hormone ang responsible kung bakit nagkakaroon tayo ng positive spin bar K, so positive spin bar K is due to your positive estrogen in your cervical mucos. Kasi si estrogen hormone po ang nagkukos ng ating thinning of the cervical mucos. Then next, for letter R, letter R is to reduce the bone resorption. So take note that estrogen hormone reduces the bone Resorption. Kaya nga kapag tumatanda ang isang babae at kapag bumababa na po yung level of estrogen sa kanyang dugo, nagkakaroon po siya ng weakening and brittling of your bones that causes your osteoporosis. So letter O, osteoporosis prevention. Bakit nakaka-prevent po yan ng osteoporosis? Kasi nga it reduces your bone resorption. So it prevents the weakening and brittling of your bones. So it prevents your osteoporosis. Porosis. And letter G, common board question, so that is your gum bleeding. So pag sinabi po natin gum bleeding, take note that your estrogen hormone causes your gum bleeding especially during your pregnancy period. Why? Because it increases the blood flow to your gums. Okay? So it causes your gum hyperplasia or the gingival hyperplasia which is known as your apulis and that is your gum bleeding. Again, so letter E is your apulis epistaxis and your rhinitis of your pregnancy. So for epulis, epistaxis and rhinitis, so take note that estrogen din po ang nagkukos dyan, okay? So epulis, epistaxis and rhinitis is due to the vasodilation and the increase in your blood flow into the area. So epulis, epistaxis and rhinitis, that is due to the effect of your estrogen Hormone. So again, so nose bleeding during your pregnancy is possible and your nasal congestion or rhinitis is also possible due to the effects of your estrogen during your pregnancy period. And for your letter N, it is your sodium and water retention. So nagkukus po yan ng edema kasi nagkukus po yan ng water and sodium retention or the sodium and water retention. Retention. So always remember where sodium goes, water will follows. So it causes your edema of your pregnancy. Again, so estrogen hormone. Always remember your mnemonics. Estrogen mnemonics. E for your endometrial growth. S for the secondary sexual characteristics. T for the thinning of the cervical mucus or the spin bar K. R for the reduced bone resorption. And O for osteoporosis prevention. G for gum bleeding. E for epilis, epistaxis, and rhinitis, and N for your sodium and water retention. So, yan po yung ating mnemonics para kay estrogen para hindi po natin siya malimutan, okay? Then next, after your estrogen hormone, let's talk about your progesterone hormone. So, pag sinabi po natin progesterone hormone, sabi natin progesterone is the hormone for mothers or the hormone for pregnancy. So, take note that progesterone inhibits the luteinizing hormone or the LH, okay? So, pag sinabi po natin progesterone, always remember your mnemonics, progesterone mnemonics. Okay, so let's begin with letter P. So, letter P, that is your pregnancy maintenance hormone. So, take note that your progesterone is the hormone that maintains the thickness and the secretions in the lining of the uterus, which is ideal for the implantation of your embryo, okay? So, again, so letter P, your hormone progesterone is the responsible hormone for your pregnancy 
maintenance. So, letter R, we have your relaxation of the ureters, bladder, and uterus. So, take note also that progesterone relaxes your smooth muscles like your muscles in the ureters, bladder, and your uterus. So, not only into your bladder and uterus, also with your colon that causes constipation during your pregnancy period. So, nakakapag-constipate po ang ating progesterone kasi nare-relax po niya yung ating peristaltic movements. Okay? So, it relaxes the ureters, bladder, and uterus and that is a common board question. So, tandaan niyo po yan, it relaxes the bladder and it causes also your constipation during your pregnancy period. And letter O, it is your hormone which is at peak during your ovulation period. So, pag nag-ovulate ang isang babae, mataas po yung level niya ng progesterone. So, mataas ang progesterone level during your ovulation period. And letter G, G for your gingivitis. Okay? So, it causes also your gingivitis because of your relaxation of your gums, permitting your microorganism to thrive in your gums or your teeth okay so it causes your plaque formation and this plaque formation causes your gingivitis or your inflammation of your gums then next for letter e that is your embryo nourishment so take note that your progesterone is the hormone responsible for the nourishment of your growing embryo by maintaining the secretions into your uterine lining by increasing the secretions of your mucin and your glycogen okay so next letter s this is the hormone which is usually high and at peak during the secretory phase of your endometrium or your menstrual cycle. So, kung kanina sa ating proliferative phase, si estrogen ang mataas, sa secretory phase naman ng ating menstrual cycle, ang progesterone naman po yung napakataas. Okay? Kaya nga, yung secretory phase ng ating menstrual cycle ay tinagurian natin na most ideal or the best time for implantation or pregnancy period. Kasi nga, maganda po yung secretion sa lining at kapag may nag-implant po dyan, mabubuhay po siya. Okay? The next letter T, letter T is the thickening of your mucus. So, don't be confused between your mucus or the cervical mucus actions. So, we have your estrogen, it causes the thinning of the cervical mucus, while your progesterone causes the thickening of the cervical mucus. Again, so the thickening of the cervical mucus is due to your hormone progesterone. Kaya nga kapag ito yung nag-increase sa level ng progesterone, it causes the thickening of the cervical mucus forming your mucus plug or yung tatawag natin na operculum during your pregnancy period. Sinisil niya yung cervix mo kapag nabuntis ka na para hindi na makapasok yung mga microorganism to protect your growing embryo. Okay? The next letter E, letter E is the endometrial tortosity. So, nagiging tortose or spongy layer po ang uterus mo kapag mataas ang progesterone hormone. Okay? So, compact spongy yung layer of the uterus kapag merong hormone progesterone. And take note for letter R, progesterone is the hormone responsible for rising your basal body temperature. So, positive BBT is due to the action or influence of your hormone progesterone. So, positive BBT or the basal body temperature. So, nag-i-increase lamang po yan ng 0.3 to 0.5 degrees Celsius. And letter O, onset of labor occurs when the level drops. Okay? So, take note kapag ito'y bumagsak sa level ng ating progesterone, it causes the onset of labor. Kasi meron po tayong tinatawag na theory of labor na progesterone deprivation theory. Na kapag bumaba ang level ng progesterone mo during your pregnancy period, it can cause contraction. Kasi take note, progesterone relaxes your uterus. So, pag bumaba po yung level ng inyong progesterone, magkocontract at magkocontract ang uterus mo causing your premature labor or your abortion. Okay? So, onset of labor occurs when level drops. And letter N, your progesterone hormone neutralizes estrogen hormone especially sa mga may kinalaman sa ating blood clotting factors. Kasi take note that estrogen ay nakakalapot po yan ng dugo. So, kailangan in-neutralize po ni progesterone para hindi po tayo mag ng blood clotting disorders or problems during your pregnancy. Kaya nga, kapag ikaw ay nagtitake ng estrogen pills, kailangan na-report mo kapag meron kang severe leg pain or any pain into your muscles kasi baka meron po tayo na mumuong blood clots dyan. Okay? So, the next we have also letter E esophageal reflux or yung tatawag natin na pyrosis or heartburn during your 
pregnancy period. Why? Because progesterone relaxes smooth muscles. So, progesterone causes your pyrosis or your heartburn during your pregnancy by relaxing your cardiosphincter muscle, allowing and permitting your gastric content to be reflexed outside your body. Okay? So, tatandaan nyo po yan. So, kapag meron po tayong pyrosis or heartburn of pregnancy, that is a normal discomfort due to your increased progesterone level. Okay? So, tatandaan po natin yan. Again, so, para hindi po natin makalimutan yung ating progesterone hormone, we have here our mnemonics, progesterone mnemonics. P for pregnancy maintenance hormone, R for relaxation of the ureters, bladder, and the uterus, causing your uh, urinary incontinence and causing your constipation during your pregnancy period. Next letter O, ovulation. So, take note that progesterone is at peak during your ovulation period. And letter G, gingivitis or the gingival inflammation. Okay? The next letter E, embryo nourishment by increasing the secretion of your mucin and glycogen. And letter S, it is the highest hormone during your secretory phase of your menstrual cycle. And take note that your progesterone causes thickening of the cervical mucus or yung tinatawag natin na operculum or mucus plug during your pregnancy. Again, estrogen thins the cervical mucus while your progesterone causes the thickening of the cervical mucus. And letter E, it causes your endometrial tortosity and rising of your basal body temperature. And take note also that progesterone levels should not be dropped during your pregnancy period because onset of labor occurs when the level drops. Okay? And letter N, your progesterone neutralizes the effects of estrogen, especially kapag ito may kinalaman sa ating clotting factors. And letter E, esophageal reflux, pyrosis, or heartburn. So, normal lang po yan na discomfort during your pregnancy. Again, so we have your mnemonics for estrogen, estrogen mnemonics, and the mnemonics for progesterone, progesterone mnemonics. <music> Oh, 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 oh,